Here we're going to be going through an example here where we're using this lower of cost or market inventory costing here. And what we're going to be concentrating on here is a valuation account and how we represent uh, this uh, lower cost of market here using this valuation account on our income statement. And what we're going to be looking at here, let's just say we're given our sales and inventories here for the period. And I've got them listed here by the month, the end of um, uh, January here through April. The end of the month, we're given our inventory at cost. Now, this is the original cost of the inventory that's sitting here on our, in our inventory on our balance sheet here. And now we have the inventory here at the lower cost or market. Now, let's just say this has been calculated here, this lower cost or market. This is the lower of the difference between here, the cost and the market value of our inventory. So in this example, the market value was lower here than the cost of the inventory. So that's what we selected here for inventory at the lower cost or market value here. And you can see that our inventory here is uh, 29,000 here versus the cost here of 30,000. And we've got them listed here for each of the months to follow here. And then we have some purchases here for the month here. And then we have some sales here by the month here. So what do we have to do here? Uh, so using this lower cost or market, that's where our inventories are recorded at their cost. And if the in inventory declines in a value below the original cost, you write down the inventory to the market value here and you have to report this loss here. So let's go and look at our calculation. Here we're going to have to be looking at our gain or loss here to this market fluctuations here in our inventory. Remember here we had our inventory up here. Um, it was recorded here at the what we call the LCM, lower cost of market here. We've got that recorded and then we had our inventory here at our cost. So uh, to determine any gain or loss here, what we will start with here is just taking our inventory at its cost here and then we'd be subtracting out here the change here, the inventory at the lower cost or market value that we have here. So let's just go look at our definitions here. First for our inventory here, the lower cost or market amount here, you can see it's lower here in all cases than our cost value. So we have to write this down here. This inventory is going to have to be written down here because of this fluctuation or change here in our inventory. And then this, we're going to have to come up with this allowance here. Uh, we're, this is what we're going to be looking at here in this allowance account. This is what we're going to be concentrated on. This is the balance required in our valuation account here. We're going to have looking at a uh, allowance account or a valuation account. And then we're going to have to determine any gain or loss that we have on this markdown of our inventory. Now, this gain or loss, that's based on the balance required here in this allowance account. We're going to go through that here. So what are we talking about here? Before we get into our calculations, let's look at this allowance account. Now, here's our allowance account. This is the allowance to reduce our inventory here to, in this case, write it down here to the market value since the market value was lower than our cost. And also here in conjunction with our allowance account here, we're going to, uh, that's on our balance sheet. This allowance account, let's just look at it here. That's a balance sheet account. And this we use with the indirect method here. Uh, using the indirect method here, we use this allowance account here for writing down our inventory. Now the allowance account, let's look at here. That's a contra asset account. It reduces the inventory. So if you look at your debits and credits here, you're going to find out this allowance here is a contra asset account to our inventory account here on the balance sheet. And it reduces our inventory here. And then on our income statement, we have this loss of inventory as for decline. We recognize a loss here on our income statement uh, in conjunction here with this uh, write down writing down of our inventory. And again, that's on our income statement. So let's go up and let's calculate at this allowance. Uh, see what we have to put into this allowance here to reduce our inventory to market. So first off, uh, look, at, it's easy enough to come up to determine what uh, should be the balance here in our allowance account. But the difficult thing comes in to calculate any gain or loss here. And this is where we're going to use this T account form to do that here. So uh, for our allowance that's required here for a write down of inventory, all you do is take the inventory cost here, less the inventory, it's, it's a lower cost or LCM value here. And you're going to see like 30,000 here less 29,000 gives us allowance required here of $1,000. So that's what's going to be used here to write down our inventory and uh, what we have to determine here in our uh, 
allowance to allowance account here and then uh, the next month here 30,200 less 25,200 gives us five thousand dollars and the same for March here the difference here uh, between the inventory cost and the LCM value is twenty eight hundred dollars and then 430 the difference here between the cost here and the LCM value here is fourteen hundred dollars so now this is what we have to, we know what we have to have in our allowance account here, but we have to determine what the gain or loss that we'd be recognizing here for each month here. And this is where we, we're going to use that T account here. Now, again, if you look at this allowance required and this gain or loss, that's based on the lower cost or market here that we were looking at here for in this example here. So let's go and look at here. To determine, let's look at here first. Uh, January 31st here. We have allowance required of a thousand. Our gain or loss, well we're going to de determine that here to be a thousand dollars. So our allowance account, we credit that here for a thousand dollars since we have this uh, different or this loss here and then we would go over here to our loss on our income statement, our loss for inventory de uh, decline here, we debit that here for $1,000. Easy enough here. Now for the next period here at 228, uh, we determine our allowance required here was the difference here between 30200 and the 25200 So we have to have a balance here of $5,000. We already have an, a balance of uh, $1,000. So let's go down and look at how we calculate that. So we have the balance here. 1,000 we have to get down to up to $5,000 here on 228. 131 we had a thousand dollars 228 we have to have a balance here of five thousand dollars to do that all you would have to do is take the difference between the thousand and the five thousand you're going to come up with the difference here would be four thousand dollars and that's what we would have up here in our gain or loss of four thousand dollars so uh, in this case we would be crediting our allowance here for four thousand dollars our allowance account here and then the uh, we'd be debiting our loss here in this inventory uh, by four thousand dollars so what we've done here if you look at their debits amount here in your inventory decline here that uh, would be the loss due to the market decline so here's where we recognize their loss easy enough here now let's go and look at 331 here uh, we have the allowance required the difference here of 34,000 less 31,200 gives us our allowance required of twenty eight hundred dollars now uh, to determine the ga any gain or loss here let's look at how we do that so what's sitting in this account right now here is five thousand dollars and we have to get down to a balance here of twenty eight hundred dollars per our allowance requirement here the difference between the inventory cost here and the uh, LCM value here at 331 and in order to do that here uh, we're sitting at 5,000 so we'd have to uh, debit uh, 2200 here to our allowance account to bring our balance to $2,800 simply the difference here between 5,000 here and the $2,800 so what we would do here is we debit or reduce our allowance account here by 2200 and then we go over to our loss on our inventory decline here and we credit that here for $2,200 so what we've done here is we're recovering our loss here by doing that and uh, let's go up here and look at our final numbers here in 430 we had the in cost of 28,000 inventory LCM of 26.6 so the allowance required here was that difference of $1,400 and then we're gonna come up here with uh, we're gonna determine that we need $1,400 here reduction so let's go and look at our allowance here we had the $2,800 sitting here we have to get down to $1,400 and in order to do that all you do is debit or reduce our allowance account here for $1,400 dollars and then we go over here and we'd uh, credit or reduce here our loss and our inventory decline here by fourteen hundred dollars again you can see this is recovering any of our losses that we recognized previously here and then initially here we had to recognize a loss here based on that uh, valuation of our inventory so next we'll go and look at how we'd record this here on a, on a financial statement how we'd recognize any allowances here and these losses here on our financial statement 
Okay, now let's look at how we'd set up our income statement here, and again on a monthly basis, and we're going to be looking at it in terms of our gain or loss here that we've calculated here. So again, our income statement here, we're just going to be looking at February, March, and April. We'll not go through all the numbers here, uh, but this is how we'd set it up here. You can look at it here. Again, we'd have our sales for the period here, and then uh, we'd have to calculate our cost of goods sold. And our things we have to note here is our beginning inventory values here. Now you can go back here and look at that's the previous month's ending inventory in this case here. And then we're going to have some ending inventory here as well and that's going to be our inventory here at cost here. And then this valuation account here that was our gain or loss that we calculated here. Okay so let's just look at it here. Cost of goods sold, remember a beginning inventory here plus our purchases for the period here. Adding those two amounts together you're going to get our cost of goods available here for each of the months here. And then our ending inventory uh, that's remember our ending inventory here at cost. So subtracting that here from our cost available here for each of the months less our ending inventory amount here at cost gives us our cost of goods sold here. And now to determine our gross profit simply taking our sales amount here for each month less our cost of goods sold gives us our gross profit here that we're showing. Now this is where we have to come in uh, use this uh, valuation account here and this is where we calculate our gain or loss here on the market change in value. So uh, again we had our in this case for February we had a loss here of 4,000. March here we had recovered um, part of that loss here for 2200 and April we also recovered part of the loss here for $1,400. Now you can go down here and look at that here. Uh, in our gain or loss due to market inventory fluctuations that we calculated here, we had our gain or loss here showing uh, for each month here. Uh, and at the end of each month. Now we're just looking at here from our February, March, and April months. So that's the what we'd be taking our gain or loss here. Move that up into our gain or loss here for each of the months. 4,000 February, 2,200 uh, loss here. 4,000 in February, a recovery here of 2,200 in March. Another recovery here of 1,400. So our net profit here uh, would just be the difference here between our gross profit here for each month less our gain or loss that we recognize here and that gives us our net profit here. And just let's go back here to this T account again here. So our loss to recovery of decline, remember here um, that was uh, this was on our income statement here and that remember at 4,000 here, 4,000 and then our, that was our loss amount here and the 4,000 here was for February and then our recovery here uh, March we had 2,200 here and on uh, April here we had $1,400. So that reduced our loss account here. And if we go back to our income statement, you can see those amounts here. Again, we, we looked at the February. We didn't look at the uh, April, uh, January date. We just started with February here through March here. So that's how we'd present this here on our income statement here when you have setting up this valuation account.